Uh, welcome to part three of the series of videos on passage planning. I will give you the links to the previous uh, two videos that I have made in this series in the description section below, along with other useful videos for learning about chart work and associated passage planning. In this video, I will be focusing on the reporting systems as required by the process of passage planning. In the first video, I talked about the appraisal process of the passage planning. And then in the second one, I talked about the planning process. Uh, this one uh, will focus only on reporting procedures and uh, the vessel traffic services or VTS reporting system. All right, so let's get started. Uh, ship routing and reporting uh, procedures have been put in place to improve the safety of navigation for ships. I'm sure if you have been sailing on ships, uh, you probably have noticed uh, how ships have to report or the officers have to report to uh, specific bodies and organizations called uh, Vessel Traffic Services or VTS, uh, especially in areas where there is converging traffic. So when we say converging traffic, we mean a lot of traffic coming into a point of entry or exit of a channel. Uh, examples could be uh, the Malacca Straits, the English Channel, uh, similar other traffic separation schemes or channels where a uh, lot of ships come into a point of entry. We could also refer to pilotage waters. There are some pilotages which last for two to three to four hours or sometimes even more. There are river passages and even there uh, you can see a lot of ships are there and because of the converging traffic and the possibility of uh, an accident or a collision, uh, you have certain reporting systems in place. Uh, freedom of movement of shipping and restricted sea room. So wherever you will have uh, any kind of restricted sea room and uh, you will have restrictions on the freedom of the movement of the ships, uh, alterations of courses, uh, then you will have such reporting procedures there as well. Any other areas where there is any existence of obstructions to navigation, uh, limited depths or unfavorable meteorological conditions, and again, here the example I would be giving is of uh, pilotage waters uh, where pilotage lasts for many hours. So sometimes you are not uh, familiar with those areas and a pilot may be used throughout the four or five hours of pilotage. And that point of time, even though with pilot on board, you may have to engage in mandatory reporting. Uh, this has also been put in place to prevent or reduce the risk of pollution or other damage to the marine environment? Well, these are all related causes because uh, the main cause here is if you have any kind of accidents like a collision or grounding uh, where the ship's structure may get damaged, as a result, uh, the ship may uh, leak the fuel oil that it is carrying in tanks into the waters. And once this happens, uh, there could be major environmental damages in the vicinity of uh, coastal states. And uh, everybody frowns upon that. Nobody wants that. It involves major cleanup operations, a lot of cost to the ship owners and other associated parties. And that's why uh, these systems have been put in place. The objectives of the ship routing and reporting systems uh, is to make sure there is a separation of opposing streams of traffic to reduce any head-on encounters. And I'll show you what I mean when I'll show you an extract of a traffic separation scheme. A traffic separation scheme uh, is put into place to ensure that traffic uh, uh, proceeds in their appropriate lanes. So incoming and outgoing traffic have their own lanes, which they should maintain. And the ship reporting and routing systems monitor that this is carried out efficiently so that the ships do not cross lanes. There is no possibility of any collision between incoming and outgoing traffic. Uh, again, uh, reduction of collision or danger between crossing traffic and shipping in established lanes. So we don't only want to keep the traffic separate, but we want to ensure that uh, they do not. Uh, uh, one ship does not go into the area of the other. Uh, this could also happen if a ship is trying to cross a lane or join a traffic lane um, or the, uh, with other smaller ships in the vicinity or fishing craft or local traffic such accidents do not happen. Simplification of traffic flow in converging areas and organization of safe traffic flow in areas of concentrated offshore oil areas are also objectives of this reporting systems. Uh, the reporting system also assists in the organization of safe traffic flow in areas hazardous or undesirable to ships or certain class of ships. So here we could be talking about uh, deep draft vessels or vessels constrained by draft when navigating with very uh, a reduced margin uh, for any kind of alteration or uh, deviation from their uh, set courses. 
then also reduction of grounding risk by providing special guidance to shipping in areas where water depths are uncertain or critical and finally guidance of shipping clear of or through fishing grounds or any kind of local traffic that may be engaged in fishing or other similar activities procedures and responsibilities for ship reporting well the international maritime organization or imo is the only recognized international body responsible for establishing and recommending ship routing on an international level uh, so you will see that most of the popular traffic separation schemes have been approved by the imo and uh, that is mandatory for you to use as well as the reporting procedures are mandatory there are however many states many countries where you have non imo approved traffic separation schemes well they come with a caution the ships are then provided with an option of using them or not using them in my experience ships do use them because it pretty much uh, forms an informal way of segregating maritime traffic however uh, non approved imo traffic separation schemes give the master the option of uh, not using them if they want to and stay clear of those traffic separation schemes but in practicality that rarely occurs but then uh, you have that option as a mariner individual governments do propose to imo that a new or amended routing scheme be adopted and they seek to get approval from the imo regarding the ship's use full details of any new or amended scheme are to be provided to the relevant hydrographic authority by the responsible government at least 6 months prior to implementation because that makes them ready the hydrographic office that allows them to also include the changes in relevant charts publications to advise the mariners or seafarers of its use the use of routing systems are intended for day as well as night use they are recommended for use by all ships bearing in mind the requirements for adequate under keel clearance that is adequate depth under the keel of the ship navigating in or near a traffic separation scheme vessels must obey rule number 10 of the rules of the road you are probably familiar with the rules of the road and rule number 10 refers to traffic separation schemes and narrow channels or that is traffic rule number 9 but rule number 10 specially refers to traffic separation schemes extreme caution should be observed when navigating near junction points where traffic meets so this is the point that i am again restating that uh, when you start entering the channel that or exiting the channel uh, those are the points where you see a lot of converging and merging traffic a lot of ships coming into uh, from different courses and joining that particular lane and that is a critical point and you have to be very mindful and careful of how your ship is positioned with respect to other ships in the vicinity only deep water route where necessary should be used else we should keep clear precautionary areas should be avoided if practicable in two way routes including deep water two way routes keep as far as practicable to the starboard side now this is also advised on the charts itself and uh, the ships are always advised to keep to the right or the starboard side of the channel uh, and this is you can see this kind of advice on the charts Uh, here is an extract that shows you an example of a traffic separation scheme if you are not very familiar with it the left hand side of the screen is showing a traffic separation scheme as you would imagine or visualize during the day and the same thing is shown uh, at night on your on the right side of your screen so you can see here how the traffic separation is uh, separated um, by a zone and by lines you can see the direction of the travel of the ships is also shown so that uh, the ships or the mariners who are engaging in passage planning can draw the courses in the right direction and you are supposed to stay clear of the zone so allowing other ships a sufficient sea room for their passage ship reporting systems are also designed to contribute to safety of life at sea and enhance safety of navigation to minimize risk of pollution their purpose is to limit the time between loss of a ship and the initiation of a search and rescue action in cases where no distress signal is sent they also limit the search area for a rescue action and provide up to date information on shipping movements in an area 
to minimize the risk of any kind of accidents. So I'll give you an example here. If uh, once you start reporting to the VTS, the appropriate VTS, the VTS starts to monitor you on their screens, on their systems. And if by accident, if your ship uh, does tend to get into the opposing traffic or you are getting very close to the opposing traffic or the lane where you're not supposed to, they will contact you and advise you to stay clear and to come back to the right course. Sometimes uh, you may also go inadvertently or unintentionally to the opposing course while steering clear of other ships. You may be taking action to avoid collision, which may be taking you into areas where you should not be going into. Then the traffic separation scheme also or the rather the VTS will be monitoring you and still advise you to come back to your original track. Some of the examples of ship reporting systems are the OSREP, uh, which stands for the Australian Ship Reporting System. You have the REFREP, the AMVER, and the JASREP. So these are all a different kind of reporting systems available uh, in this world. Uh, I will be taking the example of OSREP here, but uh, they are pretty much the same principles. So you can see the OSREP cover image area is shown on your screens. You can see it pretty much covers, of course, it covers Australia, but it also covers uh, the surrounding areas to a certain and the boundary of the SAR, the search and rescue area and the Australian ship reporting area is shown. The approximate radius of action for Australian based long range search aircraft is also shown on your screen. So you can see that the coast uh, of the Antarctic region, the Antarctic continent in longitude 75 degrees east hence is shown alongside as well so that you are very clear on what are the reporting areas covered by the OSREP. The purpose of the OSREP is uh, an integral part it is an integral part of the maritime search and rescue the system is based of course in australia and the osrep is operated by the australian search and rescue system through the rescue coordination center of the australian government the objective of the osrep system is to contribute to safety of life at sea by uh, limiting the time between the loss of a ship and the initiation of search and rescue action where no distress signal is sent out so again you can see that uh, it's pretty similar to all the rest so all these reporting systems pretty much have the uh, same kind of uh, uh, objectives and purpose for example we talked about amber before so amber stands for uh, automated mutual assistance vessel rescue system and it is a worldwide uh, voluntary reporting system uh, as sponsored by the united states coast guard so here we are talking about the OSREP, which is an Australian reporting system, but AMVER is an American reporting system. Uh, the AMVER is a computer-based global ship reporting system, which is used worldwide, again, by search and rescue authorities to arrange for assistance to persons in distress at sea. So that's why I have taken one of these examples, but you go into any of these uh, reporting systems and you will realize that uh, they pretty much have the same kind of objectives and uh, uh, purpose as well. So, you know. Uh, so I'll keep going. So the REFREP, like uh, again, just deviating, the REFREP was uh, um, established for the Great Barrier Reef and the Torres Strait ship reporting systems, so on and so forth. So just I thought I'll just uh, explain the acronyms to you just in case uh, you are not very sure on what they are. So the OSREP limits the search area for rescue action and provides up to date information on shipping resources available in the area in the event of a search and rescue incident. And similar uh, role is per performed by the other reporting systems as well. The main report types of an OSREP report is an SP report, which is a stands for sailing plan, a PR position report, a DR report, and you, you can see the, the position report, the deviation report, all, and the final report, which is the FR report. And there are certain special report types as well for ships that are carrying dangerous goods. That's called a dangerous goods report or harmful substances report or marine pollutants report. Now, again, these are very similar to worldwide reporting systems. If you are carrying dangerous goods, you would have to report it to any of the reporting systems. But here I'm just taking an example again of OSREP. which ships should report to OSREP uh, is laid out in the supplement section. All Australian registered ships engaged in interstate or overseas trade and commerce while in the OSREP area should report ships not registered in Australia but engaged in the coasting trade between Australia and an external territory or between external territories while in the OSREP area should report uh, ships not registered in Australia but demised under charter parties to charters whose residences or principal places of businesses are in Australia. Again, when they are in the OSREP area should also report. And finally, foreign ships 
other than those above mentioned ships from their arrival at their first Australian port until their departure from their final Australian port should also report. So anytime you are in that area, the pink area that I showed you earlier, you should be reporting you to the Australian. Further information on reporting systems can be found on particular websites as well as ALRS appropriate volumes and guide to port entries. And again, this is similar for any area in the world. If you go into, you have to go into the appropriate uh, uh, regulators website or you can go into the appropriate ALRS volumes, which stands for Admiralty List of Radio Signals or Guide to Port Entry or Selling Directions as well. Uh, a page number, I think it's 22, I'm not sure, but page number or certain page number of OSREP also explains the transition process to MASTREP. Uh, if you don't know what MASTREP is, MASTREP stands for Modernized Australian Ship Tracking and Reporting System. If I'm not wrong, yes, I think it is. And uh, the the OSREP to MASTREP, uh, there's a transition process that is explained in, uh, I think it's Marine Order 63. And uh, this started from uh, 1st of July 2013. So Austrip uh, commenced in 1973, but this transition commenced in 2013. Uh, I think from 1st July 2013, MASTREP has replaced Austrip as Australia's internationally recognized ship reporting systems. So ships will be required to report via AIS, but will no longer be required to submit sailing plans and final reports as AIS data transmissions include both static and dynamic data which provide timely detailed information while eliminating manual reporting obligations. So the MASTREP application and obligation to report, uh, the OSREP area and the MASTREP area are the same and the requirement to report applies to each of the vessels, uh, for following vessels while in the MASTREP area, uh, the, a regulated Australian vessel and a foreign vessel from its arrival at its first port in Australia until its departure from its final port in Australia. Uh, domestic commercial vessels fitted with GMDSS and AIS are also encouraged to participate in the system as MASTREP assists AMSA or Australian Maritime Safety Authority in carrying out its search and rescue activities. Uh, the position reports are to be transmitted by the AIS and the master of the ship must ensure that the ship is fitted with a system to automatically transmit the uh, ship's identity, the type of the ship, position of the ship, course, speed, navigational status and any kind of safety related information. All right, so I thought I should also talk about the MASTREP because it has pretty much uh, replaced the OSREP. But uh, why I discussed both is because uh, in case you are more familiar with OSREP, you should know about the OSREP first and then learn about its transition to MASTREP from 2013. Uh, finally, the last slide uh, I wanted to show you is that VTS systems operate all over the world uh, the ship reporting systems are mandatory, especially the ones that have been approved by IMO. And you can find out information about any reporting systems from the ALRS volumes. Here, of course, I've taken only one example uh, because uh, taking uh, examples of different VTS systems is not possible. It would have become a very long presentation here. Uh, but uh, if you uh, want to find out about any kind of reporting systems, you can go into the elementary list of radio signals, uh, look at the areas that they are covering, and then go into the particular area and find out information about any kind of traffic separation schemes or narrow channel fairways that you want to. All right, so this was part three of my videos on passage planning. I have a couple of more videos on passage planning that I will release very soon, as soon as I am able to make these videos. Uh, and uh, I'll see you soon then, guys. All the best with your uh, preparation for exams and let me know uh, if you have any doubts or questions. I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks, guys, and bye for now.